Hello and uh, welcome everyone. Today we are going to take a look at data analysis with Python. I'll be using Jupyter Notebook. In Jupyter Notebook, we'll be using multiple libraries. For example, we'll make use of pandas. That's where we'll do most of the data processing and cleansing. And NumPy for some mathematical computation. Lastly, matplotlibs for visualization. Once we have these libraries up and running, Let's go ahead and hit shift enter, or you can run the cell from the toolbar. If we see a cell number, that means everything is imported correctly and there are no errors. I did define a style for the charts. Also, there's a magic function, matplotlib inline, that helps us print the chart in a cell in the notebook. If you're new to Python and Jupyter Notebook, I will link a getting started video in the description below. Just an FYI, all the code that I'm going to be uh, working with is available in the GitHub repo. First, I'll define a data source connection with the help of PyODBC. That stands for Open Database Connectivity. We define a driver. We'll be using SQL Server Native Client, server name, which is the computer name, database name, and we set the trusted connection to yes. And save it to a variable called cnxn. That'll be our database connection. Then with the help of pandas, which we imported as pd, I'll read the SQL query, select star from a view, into a data frame. If you don't want to set up a database and just want to uh, import the data via Excel, I do have the data extracted and saved into the GitHub repo. Link, link is in the description. Uh, now we'll run through how to import an uh, Excel file. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, instead of the SQL, uh, instead of read SQL query, we, we define pd dot read underscore Excel and give it the file location and hit uh, Shift Enter or run the cell and it will import the data into a data frame. We can run dataframe.info method. Uh, they'll give us the index type, columns, null values, and memory usage. Also, we can do uh, dataframe.shape. This will tell us how many rows and columns we have in the data frame. Let's get into the main objective and define our first visualization. We'll be building the overall trend chart and this is going to be the similar data analysis that we have done in the previous session with Power BI. We will define a new column, year underscore month. This is based on order date column. And we will apply a lambda function. And with the help of strf time, the strf time method takes one or more format codes as an argument and returns a formatted string based on it. In this case, it'll be year-month. Let's print the unique values from this column to double check our work. Now, we will sum our sales by month underscore year column into a new data frame called results. Then we save the unique values from this column, month underscore year, into a variable called months. We will later use this for plotting. I think we are ready to plot. Let's call matplotlib. We imported this as plt. We will define a figure size of 15.5 and call the plot function and give it months and our sales and let's define a color for the line for x label text we'll give it the month variable and let's rotate the x label vertically and define the size of 8 also i'll define y label value sales in usd and x label value months Finally, now we can call the plt.show method. Let me fix figure and fix size spelling 
and set it to equal. Also fix the X label and run the cell again. And finally, here is our overall sales trend chart. I am going to add a cell above, set this cell as a markdown, and enter a title for this chart. Let's call it overall sales trend. Now, let's move on to the second visualization. Let's start with a markdown cell and a title. Call it top 10 products by sales. We are going to create a new data frame called prod underscore sales and set it equal to df dot group by. Uh, in this case, we are going to pass in product since we are interested in top 10 products. We are going to sum order quantity and sales. We are using double brackets to pass in a list of columns. Also, let's display the data frame to check the data. Let's sort our prod sales data frame. We are going to use sort values method and pass it sales column. And since we are going to update this data frame, let's set in place to true and ascending to false. Now our data frame is sorted in descending order by sales column. Let's take top 10 rows from it and save it to a data frame called top prods data frame with the help of head method. And we are going to pass it argument of 10. Let's print this data frame. And now we have top 10 products by sales. As is, the sales column is in scientific notation. We can set pandas option to fix this. It is going to be pd.options.display.float underscore format. And we are going to set it to equal and open quotes, curly braces, colon, comma for thousand separator, and dot 2f for two decimal places, and dot format. With this in place, Let's run the cell again, and it should fix our sales display values. If it doesn't work for you, then be sure to check the data type for the sales column and convert it to float. For the next visualization, we need order date and sales column. So we are going to take these two columns from DF and save them to a NDF new data frame. We need to calculate sales for the same period last year. For this column, we need to have continuous dates. So we will need to add in missing dates with zero values. So let's get started with this. Let's create a new data frame called new underscore df and do a group by order date and call the sum method. And let's reset the index since we need the order date as a column. Now we are going to do a check for duplicate values in order date column and drop them. Set the order date as index and utilizing the as freq for frequency method and pass it the argument of d for day and fill in the missing values with zero. Also, let's sort by index and reset it as we will need order date column for further calculations. Let's run and check our work so far. It seems we have few errors. It should be duplicates with an S. And also, uh, it seems fill value is misspelled, so we need a U there. Let's fix these and run it again. Now we have all the date rows filled in and let's create a new column called previous for last year sales for the same period. We are going to start with group by method and supply it order date dot dt dot month 
and auditate.dt.day. With DT, we can access month and or day from a series, which in our case is order date column. Then we can call the shift method on the sales column. This will shift our sales column in each group uh, for n period. Works just like the regular data frame shift method. I am going to plot at month level. So let's create year dash month column. I'll copy paste the code from above to save us some time and view the data frame. All looks good. Now let's group the data frame with month underscore year column and some sale and previous sales column. Let's print the data frame to see the result. It works as expected. Now we can plot current versus same period last year sales. I am going to change the plot size and use ggplot style and call the plot method on the data frame itself. Set the kind to bar and set the figure of 15.5. This is a lot easier than plotting everything manually. However, it's not as flexible as matplotlib. Here's our current sale versus sales same period last year month over month comparison. Lastly, we are going to create a 100% stack chart by country and product category. We are creating a new data frame uh, grouped by these two columns and summing the sales and as well resetting the index. So we'll get all the column. The outcome of uh, this action is, is a series so essentially we have to convert it with pandas to a data frame. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, call pd.dataframe and then pass in the series and save this into a data frame called df underscore chart. In the next step, uh, we will create a cumulative sum or a come sum data frame at country level. I need the sales amount at country level to create to calculate percentages. So we are grouping uh, df underscore chart by country and applying the cumsum method. And in order to have country as a column, you're resetting the index. This gives us sales at country level. Okay, so now we can move on to the next step. Let's combine the two data frames into one. We do this by uh, calling the B, uh, pandas merge method. We declare df underscore combined. This is where we're going to save our result. And with the help of merge uh, method, we combine the df underscore chart and come sum on the country column. This is the equivalent of a SQL join where we join two tables on a column. So let's print the combined data frame. Since we had uh, sales column in both the data frames, uh, the merge operation renamed it to sale sales X and sales Y. Uh, now we can create the percentage of the whole for each country by category. So I am going to create a new column called sales percentage or sales underscore PR for short and divide DF combined sales X by sales Y. Since we only need the percentages, uh, we can drop the sales X and sales Y column and we do and we drop column by calling the drop method on the data frame and pass it the columns uh, and I'm going to set the axis to one and since we are updating the data frame uh, setting the in place to true. Once I run this uh, these columns are dropped from the data frame. So let me comment out the previous actions and print the final data frame. Uh, before we can plot this, we need to pivot uh, the product category column. So each category becomes its own column. Let's use pandas pivot table method. It needs a data frame, uh, the value column, which in our case is sales underscore PR that contains all the percentages and the index. Uh, we will provide the index of country and the column to pivot on uh, is the product category. 
and let's reset the index so we get everything as a column. Uh, let's print this new data frame. It looks perfect. We have all the categories as columns with percentages. This was a little involved process, but we are ready to plot this. We are going to call plot on the data frame. Set X to country and bar type to horizontal or bar H and set the stack equal to true and the figure size is as usual 15.5. Since we have four categories, I am going to give it four colors, orange, royal blue, light sky blue, and purple. While we are at it, let's give it a title. I'm going to call it sales distribution by category and set mark right to true. Once I run this, uh, it will print out our stack chart. We can make few improvements on this, uh, such as moving the legend outside the chart so it won't block the bars. Uh, we can do this by calling a PLT legend and passing it the parameter BB box underscore two underscore anchor. This is straight from the documentation, so I don't remember this. You don't need to either. So once I call this, you'll see the legend moves outside the bar. And in order to show percentages, I am going to copy paste the code that will display the percentages on top of the bars. This is the result of uh, Slack overflow, so I'll leave the link to it. Here is our final chart with uh, legend outside and percentages on top of the bars. Now let's print out some KPIs at the top. So once I display it in a browser, we see these at the top. Uh, I will print out total sales by summing it, uh, then order count. Also, I'll sum it at the data frame level. And last but not the least, order quantity. Uh, let's re represent these in thousands since these numbers are a little bigger. And also round these numbers. And finally, uh, convert convert these to string as the print method only takes strings. I'll also format these with thousand separator and eliminate the, uh, the de decimal places. You scroll down to see all the visualization, but uh, I'm going to use a framework called Voila. Uh, what it does, it, it runs the Jupyter Notebook and only prints out the visualizations. I'm going to navigate to the play to the folder where I've saved the notebook and open up a command prompt and uh, I'm going to just type in voila and the name of the Jupyter notebook. Once I do that, uh, it's going to run the note. It's going to open up a browser, run the notebook and only going to pull out the visualizations from here. And here we go. We can scroll down to see all of our visualization. Uh, it looks nice right out, the, right out of the box, but you can certainly improve upon it by formatting it. Uh, also adding some widgets to it for uh, additional uh, interactivity. Uh, maybe I'll, down the road I'll do that and uh, add that functionality to this app. But this is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this session and picked up a thing or two. Please feel free to share any comments that you have. This is all for now. Thank you.